join us on this eight and a half miles kayak from Talabont Onusk to Tlangatog on the Monmouthshire and Bracken Canal on the 11th of February 2022. If you like kayaking and are interested in the Monmouthshire and Bracken Canal, then watch on for cinematic footage of the scenery on this route and learn about what we encountered together with practical information about kayaking this route. Stick around to the end for bonus content to help you if you are interested in kayaking this section of the canal, including logistics such as parking, public transport, launch and landing locations, what equipment we used, recommendations for pubs and restaurants on the route, information about potential safety and other issues on this route, and other useful information about kayaking the Monmouthshire and Brecon Canal generally. Hi, I'm Carlos, captain of the kayak crew. We are obsessed with kayaking and we are vlogging and blogging our exciting kayak journeys in which we explore the Monmouthshire and Bracken Canal, the Wales Coast, the River Wye and other areas. If you're new here then remember to click that subscribe button. So let's jump into the video of our kayak from Taliban on Usk to Tlangatog on the Monmouthshire and Bracken Canal. We launched from Taliban on Usk at about 1pm and paddled through the 343 metres long Ashford Tunnel. After a lunch stop, we then came upon the five canal locks on the west side of Clan Gunninder, having to carry our kayak and gear around them. In the gradually fading light, we paddled the second half of the route through a landscape of rolling farmland with the backdrop of the Bracken Beacons mountain range. We eventually arrived at Clan at about 6pm in the evening, by which time it was dark. It's quite a cold February afternoon and uh, we're just setting off from Taliban on Usk. That's uh, looking down towards where we parked down there, Taliban uh, bike hub. We're paddling through Taliban on Usk, uh, although most people just tend to call it Taliban, the shortened version. Looks like Archie is already starting to overheat with his uh, PFD and about four layers of clothing. <laughs> That's the White Hart Inn in Taliban. Uh, it's a nice canal side pub. The beer garden backs right onto the canal. We're just passing another pub in Taliban on the left coming up called the Traveller's Rest. We're just leaving Taliban and heading south down the canal. Uh, looks like there's a grey cat on the bank over there who wants to play. Oh no. Should we go closer? No, <laughs> holes in the kayak. He might break, uh, bust it with his claws. Yeah. He's undergone. We're only about uh, three quarters of a mile from Taliban and we're already coming up to the Ashford Tunnel. We just entered the Ashford Tunnel. Uh, it's about 343 metres long, apparently. Uh, because it's dead straight, though, you can see all the way through to the other side. We've uh, got a light on our kayak and Archie's got his flashlight as well, so we've come prepared and we've got two whistles. <laughs> It's obviously very dark in the tunnel and uh, there's no towpath so uh, you've got to be very careful and uh, have lights in your kayak and definitely you need to bring a flashlight with you as well. I have to say we were a bit worried about going into the tunnel. Uh, the prospect of meeting a canal boat coming the other way didn't really uh, inspire us uh, but we were pretty careful and made sure there was nothing come in before we started in. I think we're about two thirds of the way through the tunnel already. Uh, fortunately in February it's pretty quiet on the canal but uh, in the summer there's a lot more boats so you need to be more careful. So we're just coming up to the end of the tunnel. I like to stand the stream in. As you can see, there's there's no towpath in the tunnel, so uh, if something does come when you're in there, you've got nowhere to go, so you've got to be careful. As you can see, with the upper section of the canal, you uh, you get a backdrop with some of the the foothills from the Bracken Beacons. We're coming up to Bridge 139A. Uh, the bridges are numbered with the highest bridge uh, on the northern end by Brecken and, and then they consecutively decrease as you head further south then so all the bridges are numbered on the canal. You normally see a lot of canal boats going up and down the canal when you kayak in but um, because it's February it's uh, the off season so you don't see many now. When we kayak the canal in the summer you always uh, see a lot of people cycling and walking but it's uh, 
It's pretty quiet, but it's a weekday and uh, it's February and it's it's pretty cold today. Is one of the many lovely canal side properties you see on the canal. It'd be lovely to live in a house overlooking water. We'd now gone about three miles along the eight and a half mile route and we managed to get some selfie footage using the GoPro on the front of the kayak. Yeah. As you can see, I was doing most of the paddling as usual. And uh, also as usual, I'd uh, brought too much stuff and it overloaded the kayak. I'll have to learn to travel lighter. We've only done about three and a half miles of the eight and a half miles route, but uh, it's 2.30 p.m. and we're starving, so we're having a lunch break. This is a lovely picnic area on the side of the canal. Uh, the only thing is, now we stop paddling, uh, we're starting to get really cold. We're back on the canal after our lunch stop, uh, but we haven't gone far. We got to the Clan Canada locks, so there's five locks here, and we're going to have to carry the kayak around them all. That's one lock down and four more locks to go. Uh, I think the first three locks are quite close together, so it's not really worth putting the kayak back in the canal. We're just going to carry it. That rather colourful duck is called a, a mandarin duck, I believe. Well, it's a couple of hundred metres between the third and fourth lock, so I'm back in the kayak and Archie's walking along the bank. Passing by some colourful canal boats between the third and fourth locks at Clan Gunnada. I'm coming up to the fourth lock at Clan Gunnada now. Um, the, the big tandem kayak is definitely a lot more sluggish and harder to paddle on your own. <laughs> so this is the, the fourth of the five locks on the west side of Clan Gunnada. Uh, Archie's going to get back in the kayak now and uh, rejoin me because it's a few hundred metres to the fifth lock. So we're just passing some colourful canal boats between the 4th and 5th locks at Clan Gunnada. Our arms are aching from carrying the uh, kayak and our gear around the first four locks. Now we wish we bought one of our smaller tandem kayaks now, like the, the Ituit. So we're just passing the beer garden on the right hand side for the coach and horses in at uh, Clan Gunnada. Uh, we were going to stop there, but we don't think we've got time really, because um, we've got another four and a half miles to go. So we've paddled a few hundred metres from the fourth lock and you can see the fifth and final lock coming up at Clan Ganeda. It's about 4pm already, so uh, it's going to be a bit of a race now to try to get to Clan Gatog before it gets too dark. This is the fifth lock at Clan Ganeda. Uh, it's about f just after 4pm, so uh, we've got another four and a half miles to go. So unfortunately we're not going to have time to stop and the coach and horse is in over there. We're back on the water after the fifth and final lock. Uh, there are six locks on the canal in total. Unfortunately, five of them are on this action. <laughs> you can feel it getting colder now as it gets later in the day, about half past four, but uh, we're still quite warm from paddling. Like a lot of canals, the Monmouth Shore and Bracken Canal was originally built back in the early 1800s to carry uh, industrial and agricultural produce. The canal has the towpath running alongside it all the way, as you can see on the left, so uh, it's really good for cycling and walking as well, and I've cycled and walked most of it in the past. Hiya, hi, hiya. Uh, kayak. <laughs> So we're just uh, coming under bridge 129. Uh, as I said earlier, the the bridges are numbered consecutively from north to south, with the highest numbers in the north, and the numbers decrease as you go southwards down the canal towards Sebastopol. The canal runs pretty parallel to the Usk River, and at points they're quite close to each other, so you can actually transfer from one to the other. It's about five o'clock and uh, we've got about three miles left to go to get to Clan Gatog. As you can see the light is failing and uh, casting some strange reflections in the water. Halfway between Clan Gunnada and Clan Gatog we were passing the Glanusk estate. This is where the Green Man Music Festival is held each August. 
I've not been to it, but it's meant to be a great setting with a stage set against the backdrop of the mountains and the wooded parkland of the estate. I was saying earlier about the River Usk being uh, quite close to the canal for much of the route. Uh, if you are going to kayak on the Usk River though, um, it's quite restricted for a lot of the year. We've got about two miles left to go to Clan Gatog and uh, it feels like it's getting darker and colder by the minute. <laughs> There's a lot of people who don't like uh, autumn or winter kayaking but I actually love it. I like the autumn colours in particular and as long as you dress appropriately it's, uh, it's fine. My own approach to winter clothing is uh, it depends what sort of winter kayaking you're doing. Rivers and canals, uh, dry trousers should be enough. It's about quarter to six now with about um, just over a mile to go. Uh, I think the five locks did slow us up more than we thought to be honest because we're quite behind schedule. We haven't done much uh, nighttime kayaking before um, but uh, at least on a canal we, we can't get lost. <laughs> There's obviously an extra safety element when you're out in the dark. Um, I have been out in the sea once before in the dark and um, it worked out okay but you've got to be very careful then. At least we've got some moonlight to help us see where we're going. Uh, we must be proper lunatics being out on the, on the water in the dark like this. <laughs> As you can see, if you go out in the winter paddling, then uh, you've always got to be mindful of the fact that it does get dark a lot earlier than in the summer. <laughs> it is actually quite atmospheric paddling in the dark. Um, I wouldn't fancy doing it on Halloween though. <laughs> be scared stiff. It's about six o'clock. We're eventually approaching the outskirts now of Lancatog village. So we're almost there. Yay, we're just getting to Clan Gatok now, so um, it's been a really good kayak, really enjoyed it, some great scenery. We finished a bit behind schedule as you can see, um, but nevertheless really enjoyed, great section of the canal. Regarding logistics, I met Archie at Clan Gatok and we left his vehicle there. We had struggled to find parking locations near to the canal in Clan Gatog when we'd been planning the route. The nearest viable parking spot we found was a residential street called Canal Close, just down the hill from the bridge over the canal in Tlalangatog. At Talabont on Usk, we parked up in the car park at the bike hub at Talabont, which is only about 100 metres or so walk from the canal. In terms of public transport, the bus 43 and X43 runs between Talabont and Tlalangatog. The 43 and X43 bus could be used to avoid having to double back and do a circular walk or kayak if you only have one car. This is assuming you have an inflatable kayak which you can take on the bus in its carry bag. The bus stop at the post office at Talabont is right next to the launch spot on the canal there. Regarding pubs and restaurants, the White Hart Inn at Talabont is a nice country pub right on the canal with a good selection of beers. The Star Inn at Talabont is a very good option to stop off at for a drink and or food with a beer garden next to the canal towpath. The Traveller's Rest is also right on the canal at Talabont, but a bit more easy to miss than the Star Inn and the White Hart Inn. The Horseshoe Inn at Langatog looks like a nice country pub with good food and is about half a mile walk from the canal. The Coach and Horses Inn is a nice pub near the canal locks on the west side of Clan Ganida with a beer garden overlooking the canal. Regarding dangers and issues on this route, the canal is generally only about waist or chest deep with very little, if any, current. We would though flag up the following issues regarding the Taliban to Klangadok section of the canal. Firstly, the Ashford Tunnel. The tunnel could be potentially very dangerous if you were to meet a canal boat when inside of the tunnel. The Canal and River Trust website says canoeists wishing to use tunnels that are open to them, such as Ashford, should check the tunnel is clear of other craft before entering, wear a forward-facing bright white light and a personal flotation device with attached whistle. They are also asked not to attempt to use the tunnel alone. 
Secondly, there are five locks to portage around on this section of the canal. Having to carry the kayak around the five locks west of Clan Gunnida definitely slowed us up a lot, adding maybe 30 to 45 minutes or so to the length of our trip. You therefore have to consider how heavy and manageable your kayak is and maybe take a kayak trolley if necessary. Thirdly, check for canal closures before going. All of the navigable section of the Monmouthshire and Brecon Canal are usually open, but some sections can at times be closed due to maintenance work or other issues. The Canal and River Trust who manage the canal publish notice of any such stoppages on their website, which is linked below. Fourthly, waterways licence is required to go on the canal. All craft using the Monmouthshire and Bracken Canal, including kayaks or canoes, must have a British waterways licence. This is included in the On the Water membership of the British Canoeing or Canoe Wales and can be purchased from the Canal or River Trust. The waterways licence gives you access to over 4,500 kilometres of river navigations and canals across England and Wales as shown on this map. On this trip we used a tandem full drop stitch inflatable kayak which is essentially the same as the Sandbank style Optimal kayak or the Evolution kayak which can be bought in the UK apart from a few minor differences. Drop stitch construction for inflatable kayaks involves interweaving the upper and lower walls of the chambers with thousands of threads of fibre fabric. The extra strength provided by this interweaving allows the chambers to be inflated to a much higher air pressure of about 10 to 12 psi. With hindsight, we'd have taken a lighter tandem kayak, maybe a hybrid kayak with a firm drop stitch, high pressure floor, but traditional PVC tubular sides, such as the Itwit X100. Since this would have been much lighter to carry around the five locks that are on this section of the canal. On the canal, you can pretty much use any type of kayak that you wanted, be it inflatable or hard shell. Regarding the Monmouthshire and Brecon Canal generally, we broke the 36 navigable miles of the canal up into five trips of between 6.5 miles to 8.5 miles, as shown on this map. The Taliban to Clan Gatuk section in this video was therefore the second leg of our undertaking to kayak the entire canal from north to south. Much of the canal runs parallel to the Esk River. It is therefore possible on some sections to kayak down the river and then transfer over into the canal and kayak back up the canal so as to do a circular route. Note though that there are restrictions on when and where you can kayak on the Usk River. See our website for details and we are also doing a YouTube video which will cover kayak in the Usk River. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions or comments then let us know by commenting below. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to get updates on our new content, then please click the subscribe button on the left below. Click on the right below to be taken to the playlist of our videos of our other kayaks along the Monmouthshire and Bracken Canal. Happy paddling from the kayak crew.